interesting that that the process of doing philosophy, I guess, is just so much a part of just just everyday life. I don't think you can not do it. More. Here, let me give a question, mm -hmm. okay? <clears throat> What kind of conclusion? Uh, let me put a couple of words down, okay? Uh, Certainty. No possible alternative other than the argument. What would you say, Joe? Hey. Ideally. Ideally, but I think you end up not knowing. You end up with knowing? Not knowing. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. <clears throat> Say it again. More feeling. Then we know it's true. Well, I said not knowing. Well, go ahead. But but actually, what I saw was, I was surprised by how the idea that you're always having to check with a model. There's always a model that we're That's comparing true. things to. And therefore, with the use of a model? Well, there's some, actually, there's a lot of certainty. Oh, hold on.
Right. And actually, I had a, a big success at work this week. I think kind of as a result of, of that. I, I don't know if it's for sure the result of that, but I mean, I was able to conclude very well at work mm -hmm. and act on that and take some steps that mm. really um, good. are, are going to help me and other people yeah. and yeah. may put me in a good position for, yeah. Yeah. for the success. I'd, I'd like you to become an expert on just one sentence for me. Oh, what's that? <laughs> well, okay. let me get it first. One sentence, all right. I could probably right. do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <coughs> Stephanus number 70, right? Some of you have different texts or translations. Do you have that one that starts when Socrates had finished? Everyone got that? Mm. Yes. Good. Have that. Skip that one. <laughs> I can do that. Right? Therefore, Julie is going to become an expert on the next paragraph. Oh. Quite true. Okay, read it loud for us. Quite, quite true. Quite true. <laughs> series. Well, what are we to do? Shall we discuss this very question? Whether such a thing is likely or not? What's she... What's he going to do? Discuss the likelihood. Oh, which one of these? Um, Is that likelihood. this one? Yeah. Yes. But huh, did you find that rather curious? Yes. Why? Because I thought uh, I had left statistics behind, and now I'm getting into more likelihoods. Hmm. So. <laughs> now, look here. Do you remember uh, Barbara Stecker? No. I knew her well. You know? Her right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, Barbara came up and said, Pierre, you know what? I want to see how far this argument, which he believes will end in with what? Likelihood. Is that just for this small little argument he's dealing with, or is that through the entire text? Is that a good one? It's a big one. And how? Yeah. She is not known as to someone who pills around with little questions. No. Right? Good one? Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Fairly represented? Fairly represented. Ah. See, a lot of people think what you think, and therefore they don't trust reason and the use of the mind because while they think that's where it should go, they don't think it will possibly get there. <laughs> the only problem is, that's not Plato. Mm That's why Barbara's question is so worthwhile, is it not? Well, I'd wonder what, what the implications are. If well, who would like you her. ask? Well, I will be sure to ask her later. Yeah, yeah go ahead, I'll listen. <laughs> okay, so what would you, um, what do you think the implications are? If it's all just likelihood, or if it's all... The whole book is like what are the implications? Well then, and you, you're addressing this to me for what reason exactly? This is Pierre's suggestion. Pierre wants to ask you, but... I see. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy now. <laughs> well, I, okay. can we really apply it to the whole dialogue? Because it, it comes up at 70. So yeah. it, I, one assumes it's there for a reason. My question really was about the arguments that follow, because 
Simeus and Cebes um, take issue with some of the arguments that follow, but not all of them. And so I had a question as to whether this comment about likelihood had only to do with the first of the arguments that follow it, or all of them. Okay. Let me add a sm slight variation. Okay. Is it likely that somewhere in this text he may use this word? Yes, it is. Not only likely, but the case. Well then, might it be interesting to know whether you would call what he calls knowledge, you would agree that it is in fact what you call knowledge? Yeah. Is that fair? Well, that, that she should be, be able to judge, judge it? Yes. Oh, yeah, dude. Would that be too much of a burden on Julie? If so, would <laughs> you know. take a part of it? <laughs> right. <Good idea>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look here. <laughs> Give an example, give me only one paragraph. We went over this. What does he mean by this one word? Because that's when he uses the word knowledge. 75, Stephanus numbers to 75. And there's one word that's really strange, that's all through Plato, and uh, the, un the difficulty with it, see, like, this is a great word, right? Because this is a twelver, right? Twelve letters, therefore, it's, right? It's a great word. But watch the use of this word, if you think that's something. A miserable two-letter word. Okay, let's look at it. Just two paragraphs. All right, review. Right? To go over it, would you agree? Two snacks. Do they look, uh, how would you judge it? Oh, 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 Would you agree they're not? Probably not. Well, <laughs> you mean if we look closely, do you think those are equal in every respect? No. Louder? Not equal. If well, then how come you gave me an answer like equal when it's not equal? Because they're close. What? Let me do it again. What? <laughs> Come on. They appear equal until you get up really close. Would you agree you didn't, you don't see it equal? I see it equal. Well, what did you say? Equal or unequal? Well, almost equal. That's like being almost pregnant. <laughs> No, you've equal means equal, doesn't it? There's a little difference. There's so there is a difference. Yes. Okay. So look here. In judging this, you come up with something that is not in your experience. Yes or no? Hmm. Did you see these as equal? Yes. No. You told me a moment ago it was unequal. Okay. At first, I saw him. Was it was equal? That's right. And and then when you got picky about it, I saw. Well, look here. It. <laughs> 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 it's you. All right. Look here now. Stay with it. Look here. All right. When I first looked at this, blah 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 even though they are unequal. Whoa. Whoa, what the hell was that? Whoa. Crack in the window. Somebody went through. If it's my car, they can have it. <laughs> Somebody threw something at the window? Yeah. There's a hole my, in the window. Might want to check. Right, David. Is there someone down there? David's down there. What? 
Jesus. Oh, right. David, the window broke. It's David. <laughs> he broke so David. Now, now I can hear you nice and well. I'll open the door. I'll get the door for you. No problem. I'll unlock the door. No problem. <laughs> wow. <laughs> David, break the window to get in. There you go. Thank God it's our last meeting here. Yeah. 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 It's not like a girlfriend's house. <laughs> <coughs> Small rock. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm back in the jugs, okay? You looked at this and you came to a conclusion that was not in your experience. Agree? Well, equal is in my experience. The idea of equal. But that is not in your experience. Your experience is that they're unequal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, somehow you were able to get something that was not in your yeah. experience, yeah. which is what? Equal. Equal. Yeah. Look here. Then you receive knowledge of that equal. He's calling that moment when you jumped from unequal to equal as mm. knowledge. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Louder. Yeah. It... Now watch, I'm going to get you an ally. Truly, would you call that knowledge? She's thinking. Take a look. Watch. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> Not out loud, I wouldn't. <laughs> Would you call that... Hey, look. Look here. Only because of my art that I can do this. Yeah, I mean, I think it is, but... Here. <laughs> <laughs> you got to leave the door open and walk by it, so... Here you have a beautiful picture, do you not? Two beautiful mm -hmm. nude women. So yeah. Secondary sex characteristics. Pencil pen. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Right? Now it's yeah. I did that because Brad is taking anatomy and I wanted to show off my skill. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, would you agree as you look at these two, you might say beautiful or Approaches it or approaches it. Approaches it. Uh, not even close. Or would you say? Hey, watch. You I haven't had an art appreciation class that long. <laughs> would, would you ever use this word? Depends on what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> See, no. it's the same thing over here. Two sticks. And what do you do? From this comparison, and there may be certain things they differ that are not pure beauty, you come to the idea of the beautiful. What would he call that? Knowledge. Knowledge. Would you? Isn't this weird? Louder. It's the moment of recognizing that But it's not in the not experience. In experience yeah. It's not in the experience. Yeah. Therefore, what did you receive? Knowledge. Knowledge of Equal. beauty. Of beauty. And the real. Oh. Now, you want to call that knowledge? Uh, would you call that knowledge? Well, I like the way you say you receive it. Thank you. Because it, it does come to mind. That's right. Yeah. You know, like but do you want to call it knowledge, though? Um, I think I would. That means no. Well, nobody else would understand that, so I wouldn't like be talking about it. I wouldn't, like, who would you say that to? Who would say that? Yeah. Therefore, how does it sound? 
Well, it sounds like Kant's categories, right? Yeah. <laughs> Therefore? Um, it's like some kind of inborn knowledge we have. We have inborn knowledge of beauty and equality and stuff like that. So, in that sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? Yeah, it's knowledge. And that's what you would call it. If someone asked you what knowledge is from now on, you take them through this kind of a dialogue and say, that's knowledge, whether you like it or not. Is that right? <laughs> and not only that, it's inborn. Ooh! That's what Ooh! Inborn! I don't usually talk text. that way. Ooh! <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> okay, look here. I'm going to get in one paragraph. Okay. At just about 75 uh, D E. Then, if we got it before we were born, got it? Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> right there. Uh, character to play? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Uh, then, if we got it before we were born, and we were born having it, we knew before we were born, and as soon as we were born, not only the equal and the greater and the less, but all the rest of such things. For our argument now is no more about the equal than about the beautiful itself, and the good itself, and the just, and the pious, and I mean everything which we seal with the name of that which is, the essence, when we ask our questions, and respond with our answers in discussion. So okay, look here. I'd like to know what he means by that expression using that paragraph, okay? Go ahead. <clears throat> so, we must have got the proper knowledge of each of these before we were born. That is true. And if having got the knowledge, in each case, we have not forgotten, we must continue knowing this and know it through life. For to know is, having got knowledge of something, to keep it and not to lose it. Okay, go back in the paragraph. Mm -hmm. What does he call that which is? Knowledge. Julie? It's um, the knowledge of some essence yeah. that uh, we're born with and we never forget it and we always have it and we never lose it. Hmm. It's a... Come on. Not only the equal, the greater, the less, but also about the beautiful, the good, the just, right? The holy. The holy. So, uh, what's that you're pointing to? Here? Yeah. I'm not pointing. Well, your uh, hand is on it. I've got a word, a word. Okay, no, no. Oh. It's a page, isn't it? I'm holding the page down. Yeah, it sure is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the, how about the cup? This? Yeah. That's another thing that is. Is the cup? I mean, is it? Is it? It's not a figment of your imagination, is it? It's actually a pencil holder. Oh, that's good. I'll check it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it something? I would just ask, like the page. Is that something? It's something. Yeah, that is. No. It exists, doesn't it? It exists. Yeah. Both? Yeah. Okay. So look. <clears throat> You find something curious? Well, um... What does he say, what is? Well, he's talking about is that never changes. These things change. But, wait a minute, are they both? Is this... Talking about what is? Julie? 
but not finish it. Well, it's a different kind of is. Oh, oh. You mean when he uses the word is, that which is, it's this kind of stuff? Yeah, like being. Oh, That's and this kind of stuff, uh, where do you get it? When did you get it? Before you were born. Ah, before you were born. We knew before we were born. Is that right? I like that. Yeah, before you were born. Hmm. And you must have been born having it, mm -hmm. or you couldn't recall it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, all of this stuff we're going through is just because I wanted you to read the next paragraph. Mm. Okay? This is the big one. Okay? Hold okay. on to it. Okay. And if, having got the knowledge in each case, we have not forgotten, we must continue knowing this and know it through life. For to know it is having got knowledge of something to keep it and not to lose it. Dropping knowledge, Simeus, is what we call forgetfulness, isn't it? So, okay, what do we conclude about these words? Come on. Once you recall it, you have it for how long? Until you forget. Through life. Oh. Is that right? Yeah, or until you lose, uh, until you drop it. <laughs> right. And if you drop it, it's called? Um, Alzheimer's. Yeah. Dropping knowledge. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So what does he call knowledge? Forgetfulness. This, having, the, and you have it all the time? Yeah. And didn't know you had it. Well, I knew I had it. Oh! But other people say it's right, well, not stupid. supposed to. So. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Except you and I. <laughs> no. So it's weird. It's very controversial. Because it's supposed to be all relative, right? Yeah. What happened to relativity? Yeah. It's gone. You died with Einstein. Ah. Okay. So, look here. Uh, if say just between you and I, if someone knows something, shouldn't they know they know it? Mm. And is it likely to have an effect upon them, like indigestion? Yeah. <laughs> or, or something like that? <clears throat> I mean, come on. If someone can be said to have knowledge, what do you think it does for them? Depression. Mm. Anxiety. What? Well, if we could get someone walking down the street and say, come over here, <laughs> you got some knowledge? Suppose they said yes. And if we would ask them, what's it like having it? Would they tell you also the difficulty they had getting it? And the schools they had to attend to get it? And how much they charge other people to use what they know? Not if it's this kind. That's not this stuff. Let me ask it again. Mm -hmm. What state of mind would it be to have what he's calling knowledge? Mm -hmm. Here, would it be this? At the very least. Hey, would it be this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, pardon me. It'd be open eyes. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Okay. <clears throat> or... It would be stable. Or nothing at all. Nothing at all. Depends on what the beautiful, the just, and the good is. Yeah, like what do those... Really? Yeah, continue. Well, I was just... Mm -hmm. um, because the list included beautiful, beauty, justice, good, the holy, and the... Yeah, equal. pious is holy. And the equal. Yeah. And the equal. Um, then it's a question, is it not of... Because... Um, and the greater and the less. No, 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 keep going. I was just saying it's a question of how, like you were talking about, would it be just empty or just, and because the good is 
the good the one would would be would it not just empty but it seems to, so I'm kind of baffled because it looks to me like beautiful beauty just good is more on the level of uh, the bright shining pattern you know the the radiance of being that's right, right? that's right so that's yet, right no one would deny that that's not good as well yeah. it's goodness as opposed to this is a puzzle then yes it is because it's likely if you talk to someone and say, did you know that you know these things and that we could take them through the steps of how they came to know it, would they likely or unlikely call that knowledge? Unlikely. Well, most people would say that's abstraction. Yeah, it's not yes. knowledge. Yeah. Agree? Yes, I do. And there's no state of mind that's a particular to it, is there? <laughs> I'd say there is a state of mind particular to it. But, oh, you mean, like, common? Well, well let's find out. I, I got it. Yes. Say, Miss, excuse me. Uh, were you the young lady who uh, mentioned a moment ago that you were able to recall equal? Mm -hmm. Oh, what was it like being able to come up with the idea of equal? Um. When you first said it, it came, like Julie said, it came to me. It, no, no, it, not the reflection on it. When you first said they were equal, before the discussion showed you upon reflection you really meant they were unequal. You're not following uh, the discussion. A state of mind when I first saw it. Thank you, that's was, right. I like it. Say it again. Good. St the state of mind, I don't know. It was just thinking that yeah. it was. Yeah, therefore. Assuming. Therefore, nothing special. <laughs> therefore, nothing special. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair enough. And what's he calling it? <clears throat> knowledge. Knowledge. Huh. <laughs> I, 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 I thought she said that she thought it was equal and then realized it was unequal. That's and right. You're asking her about the thought it was equal? I, the I first thought. time she said the word mm -hmm. equal. And you're saying that's what he's referring to when he says No, knowledge? I don't know. Just, just interested. When you first use the word equal, Re under realizing that equal is in my mind is brilliant. It's it's great. Oh, but that was later, yeah. But right? you're not following the point. Mm -hmm. At yeah. what point did you find it was great and your mind was light lit up in the discussion we just had? When I realized that it equal wasn't in the things that. Thank you. I don't mean later. I meant okay. the first time you used the word equal. I think it was just like any other. Thank you. Just like any other. Experience. Nothing special. Yeah. Thank you. See? Mm -hmm. Then this is the kind of knowing that ain't very special. <laughs> I mean, in terms of the impact it has, right? Hmm. Oh, I got you. From what we're Since saying. people who know should, in fact, be, know that they know, you're saying. Here's the case where knowing that you know and knowing these things is nothing special. That's right. Gotcha. And since we did this work last week, I just thought I'd bore, you know, just go back quickly and go over it. Well, that makes no sense. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Objection. We, that's because we didn't, we didn't go over everything we went over. <laughs> I think uh, Carrie had something to say. Carrie? Oh, it's, it's, it's just that uh, my own experience, if you call it an experience, of thinking about mind. I mean, all these things are in a domain that's other than my senses. And when I start to reflect on that domain called mind, whatever you're going to call it, mind, um, that's pretty special. You know, before you reflected on the fact that it was in mind, what was it like? 
Match. That's right. What's nothing that? special? Match. Natural. All right. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so this is a dude. He's reasoning in a certain way of reasoning, and he's dealing with likelihoods. And now we're getting a glimpse of what he's willing to call knowledge. Is this rather curious? Hmm. Yes. Good. Well, the reason. <laughs> well. Yeah. You see, if we can just proceed down just to, uh, it's about 77. <clears throat> Remember we had some fun with this one line? Oh no, Socrates, I did not see I was talking nonsense. Got it? Mm -hmm. It's the next paragraph I like. Mm -hmm. Right, we need a reader. Thank you. Is this the case then, Simeus? Louder, thank you. Is this the case then, Simeus? If all these exist which we are always harping on, the beautiful and the good and every such essence, and if we refer to these essences all the things which our senses perceive, finding out that the essences existed before and are ours now and compare our sensations with them, it necessarily follows that just as these exist, so our soul must have existed before our birth. But if they do not exist, this argument will be worthless. Is this true? And is there equal necessity that these things exist, and our souls did it before our birth, or if they do not exist, neither did our souls? From this, our, hey, from this, what does the dude conclude? Had to have had a soul, too, before birth. From this, from this kind of reasoning, mm -hmm. he then jumps to this great few words, doesn't he? It necessarily follows that just as these exist, just as these are, is, just as these exist, It necessarily follows that just as these exist, so our soul must have existed before our birth. From this kind of reasoning, he says, okay, from that line of reasoning, so too our souls. Right? Pretty interesting. Right? Why? Because, because we refer all the experiences of our senses to them, and we still have them. Have. Come on, more. He's using, he's, this is called an argument, isn't that convincing? Interesting. <laughs> now you know your soul exists. Why? From, from this, come on, the way this is proceeding. Well, is it like, well, there has to be some kind of a container that those are contained in that's not bodily? More. It has to be some general... Help her out, come on. Pick it up and run with it. Something had to have those experiences. Pardon me? Something had to have those experiences in order to... Something recall. must have had it before, right? Because, hey, 
before you were born must mean there must have been a prior existence. Oh! And what do we call a prior existence? Of someone? The idea of the soul must have existed. Got the steps? See, the whole thing depends upon this one line. If it's true that the reasoning brings us to this point, that these ideas can be shown by this kind of reasoning to have a prior existence before you were born, that is to say, not in your present experience, but it must have been prior to your present experience, that presupposes there must be a soul, a soul to have it. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, oh. Right. Okay, the conclusion. Keep going. I am quite convinced. Is that where we are? I am quite convinced, Socrates, that there is the same necessity. Our argument has found an excellent refuge when it maintains equally that our soul exists before we are born and the essences likewise which you speak of. Nothing is clearer to me than this that all such things exist most assuredly, beauty and good, and the others which you name, and I think it has been sufficiently proved. What's the point? Good, come on, pull it out. Does he go along with his reasoning? Yeah. I think it has been sufficiently proved. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> Who was saying that? Simeon. Yeah. This is called by Simeon. This is a, this is sufficiently proven. Hmm. Hey, Cebes comes along. You know what he says? All right. I'll give you that. It must have existed before. Must have existed. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you ain't got any argument for it will continue to exist after you drop dead here. Mm. <laughs> Therefore, while it's a splendid argument, it doesn't prove anything about the nature of the soul being deathless. Oh boy. <laughs> what a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Why? I mean, why would it stop if it was there before? Why would it stop now? That's not much of an argument. Oh, well, that's true. How can, by what kind of reasoning can you do this? That it must not only exist after you drop dead. What's the next one? And go into the next slide. It won't stop. Right. right. You have to not only show that it can survive death. Right. Right, but it will continue. Right. Because your soul may be like a suit of clothes yeah. made by a tailor. Yep. Right? And the tailor can make any number of coats for himself. Uh -huh. And he wears them all out. And finally, he dies with the last set of clothes he'd made. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, the idea of reincarnation, yeah, you can have several reincarnations, but how do you know it's going to be endless? Because it's not enough to show that you can survive your death. So you get a couple of reincarnations. How do you know you may not be, this may not be your last one? Right? Uh, that's what I say. It might be. So I say drink. Why read? I think there's a good place to quit. No. <laughs> no, we got to read fast, man. It might be our last. Our last uh. Uh. Hey, isn't it interesting that Socrates comes back and says, Hey, it's already been proven if you take a look at our past arguments and they go fooey on you. You've got to deal with this one. Agree? Agree.
Mm. Remember, we were in this paragraph very well then, said Socrates. I'm now at about 77 C or D. That's well said, said Cebes. Very well then, said Socrates. We must ask ourselves what sorts of things properly undergo this. I mean, what sort of things are dissolved and scattered? For what sorts we must fear such an end? And for what not? Next, we must consider which sort the soul belongs to. Uh, we shall know then whether to be confident or fearful for our own soul. Right? How many points? Four points. Agree? Come on. What do we have to run down? What sort of things properly undergo? Right. Yes. What sorts of things are dissolved and scattered? What, for what sorts we must fear such an end, and for what sort not? And consider what sort the soul belongs to. What do you think of that way of proceeding? One, two, three, four. You know what? I mean, it's lucky this is paperback. <laughs> right? Why is that? Well, because it's a very foolish argument. It doesn't deal with this problem at all. Why not? I was wondering that myself. <laughs> yes, but it looked to me like it did deal with it. Well, let's try it. What's the first step? What kinds of things Mm -hmm. Properly. Where are you at? Scatter and dissolve. The of the page. Oh, oh. Go ahead. Uh huh. And yes. What sorts we must fear such an end? Right, right, right. Among these things, which among them uh -huh. should we fear? Mm -hmm. Right. Right, because some things might dissolve and scattering, you don't yeah, care. Yeah, but a lot of you don't care. That's right. Right, 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 right. Which sort the soul belongs to? Mm -hmm. Which not? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, would you agree we can get a whole bunch of things that we can say scatter and dissolve? Yes. Right? I'll think of some. There they are. Those are my thoughts exactly. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. And we could then look and say which among those might we fear and which right. not. Right. And then you ask whether or not the soul fits into that class or not. Yep. How will that have anything to do with whether the number of reincarnations a person may have is limited? Well, if the soul never scatters or dissolves, then why? Then would not that have an impact on whether the soul continued or not? But doesn't say endless. But if it never dissolves or scatters, if it's not in the class. Right. <clears throat> would you agree if we if we do that, right? Would it then show whether or not the soul fits into one of these categories? Yeah. Then. We can conclude no. Yes. See, to my see, is it not possible that it could scatter and dissolve? Right? Well, a bunch of things. Okay. Which one should we fear? Ah, which not? Oh. Hmm. So the soul can scatter and dissolve many times and end it. 
Why does it therefore show that it go never stops? I thought that it wouldn't if you put it in the class of things that dissolve and scatter. I thought we had it in the other class of things that don't dissolve and scatter. Okay. Would you agree? What scatters and dissolves? The body. The body. Mm -hmm. Right? Paper cups. Yes. <laughs> Plastic eventually. Bush. Radiation. Bush. Oh. <laughs> Bush. Definitely. Definitely. The prayer councils should all dissolve. Right? The great criminal. Well, okay. Goldman Sachs. Dollars. And among those, which should we fear? Uh, sorry, which should we fear? Bush. <laughs> the soul. Yeah, that, but it's not in that class. Hmm. None of them do we fear. That's natural to all those things. That's right. That's right. Therefore, what do you think of the argument? I still don't see where that makes no, sense. No, no, no. You just had it. No, no, I did not. I said I wouldn't fear for the body or paper clips or bush that they dissolve. It would not bother me at all. So the soul would not be among what scatters and dissolves. Right. Right? Uh, therefore, it would not be among those things we fear, and that would be the soul. Right. right. Which would neither dissolve nor scatter, nor would we fear it dissolving or scattering. Mm -hmm. So if it never devolved, dissolve, if it doesn't dissolve or scatter, then doesn't it continue? And it's not going anywhere. Good. But I will, I will grant you that never does not come into the argument. Well, that's, that's my addition. It's the only word I need. Mm. <laughs> but and I had to grant you that. Boy, insult to injury. Okay, <laughs> proceed, proceed. I just thought I'd ask. Okay. Well, why would it stop? You think it's going to get tired? <laughs> would it get tired? Yeah. Why would it ever Yes, stop? it gets tired. It like carries. That's why people are in their last reincarnation are very sluggish yeah, and slow. <laughs> it doesn't argue positive. Right? Right? It doesn't argue. It doesn't no. say it will continue. And it people says, that have a lot of reincarnations, yes, they're full of energy, and that's why they've got plenty of energy. It's like a battery. <laughs> Energizer bunny. Yeah. Yeah. But I get the impression the soul has this big suitcase filled with beauty and equality and yeah, 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 yeah. And lessness and justness and good and pretty soon it says, Oh, I'm I'm tired of carrying this package. I'm out of here. And it leaves. But but I could continue. So, as long as those guys are around, equality, the beauty. Yeah, the as long as these are around. Then the soul's got to be around. But look here, how do you know then that the soul never changes? Wouldn't you agree, you know, some people that are half dead? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, yeah. <laughs> I heard about one recently. <laughs> Stiff as a board, but <laughs> eyes wide open. <laughs> okay, we're back to Barbara's question. Uh -huh. Do we have to show that this word must be there? Never mm -hmm. stops. That's only a meaningful challenge if there is the theory that we only have a finite number of reincarnations. <laughs> If you can show that this is false, then that gives you some reason to hold on to this possibility. Hmm. Well, why okay. would that's why would any soul that's laid grasp of true beauty, true justice, true goodness, and all of that want to continue with the senses? Why wouldn't, it, why wouldn't it want to continue with all of those things behind it? That's true. That's why people who experience that in most vividly have a longer number of, greater number of reincarnations than those that don't. <laughs> I, I would think... <laughs> come on, come on, come on. No, I, I, no my, my, my question is, is if you realize these things most perfectly, yeah. No, no, I mean perfectly. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll even do that. Okay. Okay. Perfectly. 
Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Wouldn't the soul at that time not need the tootle, the, the experience of, of, of cups and, and, equal, and merely approximate beauties? I mean, yeah. it already has the absolute. That's true. But would you not agree, people who have such experiences don't maintain it? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not in this life. And that's because the soul is fragile and that's why they're not able to maintain the wisdom they've experienced. Well, now you're asking about Until the finally then <laughs> it scatters and crumbles. Forgetfulness is a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> See, but this is, this is what he's dealing with. So we have to bring it back to life to see what he's doing, don't we? Mm -hmm. So it's easy to deal with one, two, three, four. And he will, and we can have fun with it. But he still has to come back to this major argument. Think so? If not, we can throw the book away. Okay. So, wait a minute. Would you agree what we're going to look at then is this? He's going to start making discussions about the, this is something that obviously scatters and dissolves, this does not. We're going to go through it. But that won't hit the never, will it? Okay. Now what's clever about this guy, I'm picking up what uh, was just said very well is this one. Okay. He's, going to th he's going to say the kind of soul we're talking about, this kind of soul has experienced, as Carrie mentioned a moment ago, a pure enlightenment state. So just not any, why are you saying, hey, look here, we're going to talk about someone who really then experienced it. Now he has to describe this. He has to describe this. And you know what? It better be partless. Yes. And of such a nature that he's then talking about the kind of reality that doesn't scatter or dissolve. So therefore we have to get a description of this kind of experience and talk then about that kind of person when we're making this judgment. Hmm. Would you agree earlier in the text he talks about the process of, for them, the idea of soul is the principle of life throughout the body. And his yoga that he develops earlier, remember, mm -hmm. is pull all of that together out of the body, separation of the soul from the body, that's what he's going to call this experience. But earlier when he describes this process, he doesn't describe what is experienced at this moment. That's why he needs this. Right. So 68, there around 68, Stephanus number, there's a yoga. Agree? We've gone over it. There's this kind of yoga. All right? No description of what it's like. Now he has to give it. Hmm. 
Oh, I liked I, the way you were nodding. That's what I was oh, calling. I was, I was nodding, but I was nodding over how it starts with the most common natural cognitions that we That's make. Right. That's right. It's a yoga based on just just nature, just mm -hmm. just in the best sense of that mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> So would you agree we should be able to get some volunteers to talk about that kind of experience and what's encountered after the separation of the soul from the body? And we're talking about that kind of problem, that kind of a soul, and the argument on reincarnation. And we can call on any number of people, can't we, Gary? Because you and I are likely to forget. Yeah. How about Jeff? Okay. He's a good man to call on? Yeah. Who else? Uh, let's see. Julie? She's a... Julie's always good. Always good. Um, oh, he's good. Barbara. Um, David? Right? Everybody in this room, actually. This is a pretty good crowd. Any number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty good crowd. <laughs> that fair? Yes. Okay, time for a break? What okay. time is it? Hold it. Separate them from your pocket. I'll take a picture. But I don't practice that. That's soul action. <laughs> Watch what happens next week. Remember what happened oh. last week. Oh, okay.